Today we're here with head women's basketball coach at Ashland University, Carrie Pickens. As a former player at AU, she was a two-time WBCA National Player of the Year and helped lead her team to a national championship finish in 2013. After her collegiate days, she played professionally overseas in Perth, Australia. So kind of starting with your playing days and pertaining to the recruiting process, what is the one thing that you would change if you could go back in time thinking of your experience? You just need to make sure that you're taking in every aspect of the university. Um, one thing that I think too many athletes get caught up in is the flash. How nice the locker rooms are, how much gear you get, how big the arena is. And I can tell you from experience that stuff doesn't matter at all. What matters are the relationships that you have, um, the opportunities that you're going to get on the court, off the court, to grow as a whole person. If I can give you one piece of advice, it would be to take in that part and make that the priority rather than the flashiness of a university. So you started your career at Dayton University, which was a Division One school, and then going into your junior year, you decided to transfer to Ashland University. Um, what made you decide to transfer, and what advice can you give to transfer students to help make the process easier for them? I decided to transfer a little bit closer to home. I have two younger siblings, that I and I felt like I was missing out on their life, and I wanted to get to see them a little bit more. So I moved closer to home, and I also moved to the Division II level where there's a little bit more life in the balance. I wasn't at school all summer. I got a little bit more of a Christmas and Thanksgiving break, and those little things really made a difference. In regards to what advice I can give to other transfers, I'm telling you, it's hard. Like, just know that up front. It is not an easy process to transfer. There are times where I know I called home crying, wondering if this was the right decision. And it clearly was. Here I am still at Ashland. But the biggest advice that I guess I'm trying to say is just take it in. Know that it's not going to be easy. You surround yourself with a support system to help make it through. And I can promise you, give it a couple of weeks and you'll be settled in in no time. What was the major difference between playing collegiate basketball at the Division II and Division I level? I would say at the Division I level, the size and athleticism is just a little bit higher than it is at the Division II level. The skill and basketball IQ and everything, very comparable. The type of basketball that I got to play at both levels was amazing. I loved every second of it. At the Division I level, I would say, again, just that the size and athleticism is a little bit higher compared to the Division II level. And so after you played, you kind of immediately jumped right into your coaching career. You became an assistant right away um, here at Ashland, and now this past season was your first year as the head women's basketball coach at your alma mater. Um, just some advice for high school athletes. How can a high school athlete um, get on a coach's radar, and when and how should they contact you when they're in that process of looking? That's a great question. First and foremost, you need to have your high school or AAU coach reach out to connect with the college coach. We receive at least 10, if not more, emails a day from players, parents, coaches that we don't know. And quite honestly, we don't have enough time to read through every single email. And so if you are really interested in a school, you need to have your coach call so that we can actually talk to them. That's the best way for you to get on our radar because we value the coach's opinion. And in regards to what we're looking for, we want a champion in all areas of life. So academically, you need to be taking care of things in the classroom. Uh, what kind of teammate are you? Are you a championship teammate or are you self-focused? And then on the court, we really value ball skills, passing, dribbling, shooting. You have to be able to do those three things if you want to be successful at the college level. And then something that I personally as a coach really look for is what kind of motor do you have? Are you crashing the boards every single time or are you just standing on the three-point line letting someone else do all the work? Um, yeah, those would be the top things that we really look for. Yeah, and kind of to go along with that, um, you kind of spoke on it, but what would you say is the number one characteristic that you look for in a player, whether that be on or off the court? And if you can kind of just describe that a little bit. The number one characteristic that I would look for in a player is what they need to stand out in something. Uh, whether that means that they are a phenomenal three-point shooter, a phenomenal rebounder, or I've had, I've recruited a player who they just win. 
It, they didn't necessarily do one thing in particular really, really well, but they were a winner. They got every loose ball. They got every rebound in their, out of their area even. And whatever team they were on in showcases, that team won because they willed their team to win. And so stand out in something. I love the phrase, soar with your strengths. And so find something that you're really, really good at and soar with it. Awesome. And in terms of official visits, um, we, obviously you probably have a lot of student athletes that come here on either unofficial or official visits. What are kind of the do's and don'ts as far as official visits are concerned? So things that we really look for when someone's on an official visit, when they are playing, we want them to be a great teammate. We want them to be selfless and we also want them to compete. I see too many gr girls come in here and just act tired and say, oh, I'm so out of shape. I don't care if you're out of shape. Keep playing. Work harder. That's something that really turns off coaches is excuses whenever you're out there playing. Just go play hard. That covers up a multitude of mistakes. And then when you're on an official visit, I do not appreciate when players are bad mouthing other coaches. I am a coach and it's a really hard profession. And I understand that you maybe haven't had the best coaching experiences with different people, but you don't need to speak poorly about that person. And so after your time here at Ashland, like we said, you decided to go play professionally overseas in Perth, Australia. Um, what were some adjustments you had to make to your game to compete at the professional level? At the professional level, I am getting paid to score. And they wanted me to shoot the ball, even if it wasn't the highest percentage shot they were telling me to shoot it. That is why they had me over there. And so it was a mindset shift of not necessarily always looking to get the best shot every time, but doing my role, which was to score. And uh, my field goal percentage, I think, dropped a little bit, but that was okay. That's what they needed from me. And additionally, just the pace of play. Overseas, that's a 24 second shot clock, which means that you got to get the shot off quick. And it took a little bit of time to get used to it. I would say it was about 10 games in until I really started to look like I was a professional athlete that they had paid to bring over. But once I got rolling, it was really, really fun.